Welcome back to the Dr. Rich channel. Today we have Michelle back in studio to give us an update about her hysterectomy story. Yes, a year and a half later, I'm doing absolutely fantastic. We're gonna ask Michelle the most common Googled questions about hysterectomy, including how's your sex life? Stick around to the end to find out. Hi, I'm Dr. Rich, and my passion is to provide every woman with practical knowledge about the world of women's health. Today, we have Michelle back in studio. She's here to give us an update on her hysterectomy story. If you'll recall, she was here at about two months post-op. If you didn't see that video, check that one out here. So I get these questions every day in my practice. As it relates to hysterectomy, patients want to know, Am I going to go into menopause? So an, uh, a year and a half later, uh, how are yes. things going? I'm a year and a half out and I'm definitely not in menopause. I feel completely normal. Um, I'm feeling great, fantastic. So none of that has happened At yet. 25, that's fantastic. 25, it's great. So of course we're joking, but the average age of menopause is anywhere from 45 to 55, the mean being 51. So whether someone has disrespected me or not, um, eventually the menopausal process will catch up with you and you'll, and you'll go through that transition. But it doesn't happen as a result of the hysterectomy so long as the patient retains the ovaries. So what are the expectation versus reality based on we discussed? Well, I will admit that before I had the surgery done, um, definitely there was a concern whether I was going to go through menopause like the day after surgery and get all these crazy hot flashes and just turned into somebody that I wasn't in the next day. But a year and a half later, thank goodness, there's no menopause on deck yet. Um, I'm not having any hot flashes. I feel completely normal. Actually, I feel great. So definitely debunked all those questions. So yeah, as long as the hysterectomy involves the removal of the uterus and not the ovaries, which anybody, you know, premenopausal that is the preferred option is to leave the ovaries behind if there's no risk factors for ovarian cancer. Um, as long as you keep the ovaries, um, there is no abrupt change in going into menopause, although that would happen eventually for all women at the natural age, which is 51. And you know, I think um, another huge question, Dr. Rich, that everybody's concerned about, including myself, was weight gain after this. Uh, um, you hear a lot of rumors and theories that once you have a hysterectomy, you're just going to blow up and never never come back yeah. and I definitely um, have not seen that at all you know if you just stay healthy the way you were before the surgery everything turns out fine so um, and that is a common question as well about weight gain um, if we look at virtually all patients uh, on a timeline and we'll look at them at year one and then year five and then you add birth control or you add a hysterectomy. The thing is um, that there are women that are in the control group that haven't had either of those things, but all three will gain weight. So it happens as a confounder independent of the intervention of the birth control or the hysterectomy. So it's not the hysterectomy that causes that. Perhaps the one caveat is if a woman has the ovaries out as well, they get a lot of sleep disturbances because of the hot flashes, they're tired, they're fatigued, they don't get as much exercise, they make bad healthy eating choices, uh, that could contribute uh, secondarily, but, but not as a result, a direct result of the surgery. So another common question I get really every day is if I have a hysterectomy, will my bladder fall out? Now we talked about that, what was your uh, concern about that, the expectation versus reality? Well, I do have to admit, when you see that you're having organs pulled out, you're worried about the next one's falling through. But good news is, mine has not fallen out. Nothing has fallen out, and I don't think it will. So that is totally untrue, and like I said, I feel great. I'm glad everything's in place. Um, so as a, as a uh, urogynecologist or as a uh, subspecialty that deals directly with fallen bladders, um, we will tend to intervene to uh, support the top of the vagina to prevent the bladder falling out pretty much in every case, in every hysterectomy that's done. Now, while it is true that the hysterectomy procedure is an independent risk factor for the future development of prolapse, as your gynecologist, we uh, suspend the top of the vagina during the surgery and that prevents that bladder from coming down. So you're actually less likely to get bladder prolapse uh, than had you not had a surgery. And now the question that everybody wants the answer to, how does hysterectomy affect your sex life? 
But Dr. Rich, I think people want to know about the recovery time. That was huge for me. So before you go into that huge question, yeah. I think we need to talk about recovery time because it's very crucial to a lot of working um, moms, even non-working moms. You don't want to think that you're going to be in bed for a month. And I was down for a split second, it felt like. And I really was going to move faster than I should. So Dr. Rich told me to put on the brakes and just let your, yeah, let your body heal a little bit. But I felt fantastic afterwards. You know, this is a really good point because um, a hysterectomy is not a hysterectomy is not a hysterectomy. It depends on how it's done. So a lot of doctors, maybe they're not um, having the experience to do the robotic platform, which is what we did. Right. And, um, you know, in their hands, the best option, the safest option is to do an open surgery. And if you have a good rapport with your doctor and it makes sense, that's fine. But I will say that virtually every hysterectomy um, or every patient who needs a hysterectomy is a candidate for this uh, type of surgery, which does provide a much faster recovery. And we're talking, you know, two months for like a, a C-section or up and down hysterectomy type versus uh, two weeks, which... If that, and two weeks only because he told me to stay still for two weeks, but I really felt, I mean, absolutely fine up and walking around like the next day. So I don't know if I'm supposed to say that or not, but that's <laughs> the truth. You know what? Weren't you supposed to have an appointment yesterday for a follow-up? I was, but I feel so good that I told the nurse that I wasn't coming. So I was a no-show. Okay, I guess we can waive your no-show fee. Okay, thank you. Thank you, I appreciate that. And now the question everybody's been waiting for. So. Does having hysterectomy affect the quality of sex, sex life, sexual sensation, feeling? Um, I know we talked about this before surgery. So again, what uh, compared to you know what the expectation was and how, how has that experience been? No, so that's a huge question that we're all concerned about, especially being the female that's having it done. You don't want anything to change in that department. Um, and I'm happy to report that nothing has changed at all not at all, you can ask my husband if you know him. <laughs> um, definitely, absolutely the same, if not better, because I'm not feeling bloated anymore like I was before my hysterectomy. All these other things that I was experiencing beforehand are gone. So I'm probably, uh, my performance has probably kicked it up a notch and I'm fine, I'm absolutely fine. Fantastic. Um, I, I, th I think it's very important that our viewers hear that perspective uh, from Michelle because I can, and I do, and you'll remember, we talked about the literature. Um, there have been validated uh, sexual satisfaction questionnaire studies where women get a survey beforehand and then get a survey after, and they fill it out, and women, on average, score higher. So that, that's an improved quality yeah. uh, sexual function after hysterectomy. And um, I didn't prompt you to say this, but, but it's true because a lot of the symptoms that are causing the discomfort, the bloating, yes. um, maybe pain from endometriosis or something going on like that that is negatively affecting uh, the sex life, those things are now gone and uh, you know patients are then allowed to just experience sex for yes. or sex. Yes, cramps, normal average cramps that you were used to when you were having you know, your menstrual cycle or whatever and that blows the whole romantic evening. Yeah. You know, and then, I mean, there was a time we were on a vacation, my husband called me shark bait because I was <laughs> bleeding in the ocean. So, you know, all these things have been taken care of today and I'm so happy to tell everybody that. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> he did and call me shark bait. <laughs> <laughs> we're in St. Thomas. Like, I'm uh, gonna call him out on YouTube. Yeah, right? I, I am calling him out. Well, thanks for joining us so we can answer your questions about recovery, hot flashes, bladder prolapse, and sex as it relates to having a hysterectomy. Again, I want to thank Michelle for coming back. Well, thank you and for having me. I appreciate it and I love the job you did. I'm feeling great. So. And stick around for our next edition of the Whisper Challenge.